This is becoming a huge topic, guys. Will wholesaling houses become illegal state by state across the United States of America? We've already seen it happen in Illinois with the law changes. Now, this is something you guys have been blowing me up on for months, so I'm going to address this in detail. We're gonna do this in a four-part series. We're gonna look at this in detail today. We're gonna look at all the different types of wholesaling, assignments, double closes, co-wholesaling, double assignments, which ones are illegal, which ones are gray areas. We're gonna dig in detail. I'm gonna talk about these in detail. Then tomorrow, I'm going to give you all the reasons why this potentially is happening, in my opinion, why they're gonna start outlawing this state by state, and that this is something that you need to adjust going forward to prepare for. Then on the next video, in the third part, we're gonna look at the reasons why this is a huge opportunity and this is a great thing happening because personally for myself and for a lot of you, this is going to make your business uh, a lot easier to run and a lot better and it's gonna have a lot of good benefits coming alongside of it. And I think a lot of people are scared that this is gonna happen because they just don't understand how good this is gonna be for the real estate investment community. It's just kinda like the market correcting. Some people are super excited running to it some people are terrified running away about, oh my gosh, is the world gonna fall apart? Guys, this is a big opportunity that they're getting rid of these rules in some states. And then the fourth video is what to do to repair if this happens in the next year or two or coming years in your market so that you can capitalize on this when this happens. Now, long story short, guys, I am not an attorney. I'm giving you my opinion. I ran one of the larger wholesaling companies in Dallas years ago. Now I'm mostly an equity cash flow guy but I'm not some fake YouTuber guys uh, on here. Uh, my businesses this year in real estate, I'll be paid on or compensated on over 700 individual real estate transactions. I know you guys watch a lot of people on YouTube, but you need to start picking the real entrepreneurs in the business. Uh, some of you are following people that have more subscribers than they do dollars in their bank account. Very dangerous, so be careful who you're following. Now, as I'm gonna go through these, I am not an attorney, I'm an investor, I'm an entrepreneur, real estate investor, agent, as well as a team leader at eXp, and we're gonna talk about this from my opinion on this. So now let's dig in. What I'm gonna to do today, guys, <clears throat> bear with me, I'm a little sick under the weather. We are going to look at all these different types of wholesaling, and then tomorrow, I'm gonna to give you the reasons and which ones are causing a detriment to the community, because a lot of families have been really hurt by wholesalers over the past few years. There's a lot of good ones, then there's a lot of bad ones, unethical, and then ones that are not so ethical, but then there's also a lot of ethical people who are just, I guess incompetent and don't understand what their limitations are or they don't understand what they're doing and a lot of people have been hurt which we'll dig into tomorrow. Now, let's go through all these different types of wholesaling because a lot of people don't realize this. Um, so I do not wholesale houses uh, anymore. I take title to everything and there's a reason for doing so. But the first and most common one is the easiest barrier to entry. So we're gonna look at the assignment of contract. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna market for a house that needs to be fixed up or it doesn't really need to be fixed up, we're just gonna market for a property that we can get at a discount or wholesale price. And so let's say this is the seller and you're the wholesaler and this is the back end cash buyer. You the wholesaler, market to the seller, depending on whatever strategy you're doing, bandit signs, cold calling, uh, you know, direct marketing, whatever it is, lots of different strategies, we talk about this on this channel. <clears throat> this seller right here is gonna sell the house to you for $100,000. That's gonna leave you room to make a $10,000, what we call, an assignment of contract, so uh, assignment fee, right? So you're gonna be in the middle like a sandwich, you're gonna be the meat and cheese while the back end buyer and the seller are the pieces of bread, if that makes sense. So you're gonna have a purchase and sales agreement with an option and or signs to assign that option to a back end buyer right here between you, the wholesaler, and the seller, and they're gonna have what's called an assignment contract between you and the back end cash buyer. So you are not selling the house. You're selling the beneficial rights and interest to purchase the house. You're signing the contract to buy the house. So this would be you. You contract with the homeowner for 100. You market that contract for sale. Do it correctly with your state's laws, guys, because they change state by state. And you're gonna sell this contract to the cash buyer for 110, leaving a $10,000 spread. That's your assignment fee. You never had to bring money to the table. You never had to take the risk of closing on the property. And you're gonna make a $10,000 assignment fee paid at closing. This is why investors are doing this, or real estate wholesalers are doing this, because they're more of a business, not an investor. But they get into business because they don't have to raise capital, they don't have to be bank financeable, and they don't have to go through the traditional headaches that they have to figure out over the years as they grow their real real estate investment business, but they figure it out as they go by building disposable income up through active income strategies, wholesaling houses. So this is the most common way, guys, because now, 
It does take money to do this, just so you realize it's not a no risk strategy. A lot of people use a lot of money for marketing to do this, so be careful, don't just jump into this business if you have no money. But that's the basic common way to get in the business. Now, this is the one that's causing a lot of trouble around the country, which we'll talk about in future videos and the other parts. This is the second, second step right here. We're gonna talk about what's a double close, called a double close, a double escrow, simultaneous close, or back-to-back -back closing. Same house, same wholesaler, same back and buyer, lenders are now involved in this that weren't before. So same house, $100,000, same marketing strategy to get out to that house, same contract to get in place with that homeowner, same amount that you're going to be assigning it to the back end buyer, or that you're not gonna be assigning it, selling it to the back end buyer for 110,000, except here's the difference. You are going to have to close, there will be two closings, back to back closings, you the wholesaler will actually take title and own the property for a very small window of time before the back end closing happens. So here's what it's gonna look like. You the wholesaler are gonna to need to have a transactional lender. There are lenders specifically out there to make this process happen. And as, this, uh, as you start to see these laws change in different states going forward, you're gonna see new loan products, new types of lenders popping up to accommodate this uh, going forward. So guys, do not worry. I promise you this is not gonna be as big of an impact on your business. I think it's gonna help you, which you'll see over these next few videos. So here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna offer this individual 100,000 for the $100,000 house, but you're gonna turn around and sell the property on the second closing for 110,000 when this lender who's representing the, the cash buyer or funding the cash buyer lends that money or funds that money into escrow, the title company is going to let you know and your lender know, your transactional lender, that the money is there, that it's okay for you to wire your money in to the other lender. They're going to fund the deal. They're gonna close the transaction. You're gonna own the transaction. Then they're gonna use this lender's money to close the next transaction. The back end buyer gets the deal. This lender has a promissory note deed of trust with this back end buyer, just like they would if they uh, bought it to flip it. Seller gets their money and it's gone. The deal's gone, right, for you the wholesaler. Now, the reason why people don't wanna do this is it takes uh, a little bit of effort, more working parts, they're gonna have some extra fees in there, so their $10,000 assignment fee and their mine is gonna be reduced. And it's just, to them, it's a lot more difficult way to do it, which I technically kind of, which it technically kind of is, but when you think about it, it's a lot safer, cleaner transaction for everybody in the middle, and it's really going to protect you long term, especially in certain situations that we can't dig into in this video because it's going to be way too complicated. Now, this is not that difficult to do, guys, and if you have a problem, you can always pass in or, or problem paying these extra fees. You can always ask your back end buyer to pay for these. Now, I'm going to give you a caveat here. What about what we call pass through closing? Some of y'all have heard this. That would be where this lender representing you, the front end wholesaler, does not lend in the transactional position, you're using this back-end lender who's funding uh, the purchase for the buyer on the back end, the cash buyer, to fund your first in closing. It's called pass-through. Now, many, many attorneys I've talked to will tell you that this is illegal. I have actually never done this. I know title companies in my market actually close these, so I don't know how they're getting around it. A lot of these things are gray areas, guys, and you may be doing this right now. You really should consult multiple attorneys and really question the uh, title company or title attorney you're working with because if you're using this back-end lender and you're not using a transactional lender to fund the deal, it could be a potential issue. Now, each state's different. I would talk to multiple attorneys because sometimes just because they're attorney does not mean they know what they're doing. People make mistakes all the time and do things illegal in the business all the time, even though they think they're doing it correctly. Now, here's where it gets a gray area. A lot of you are doing these things across the country, co-wholesaling and double assignments. So what would a co-wholesale be? So this is going to be broken down where I'm gonna kind of give this in two different definitions in two different areas. A co-wholesale would be where you have two wholesalers together wholesaling the same property through either a double close or an assignment contract. You can do it either way. Same seller, but now there's two wholesalers. Let's say one of them found the contract or found the house, they're the seller, but they don't have a big buyer's list and they don't have a distribution channel to get that deal sold. Or they can sell it for a smaller amount and they know another wholesaler can sell it for a lot more. They may decide to partner with them and they both go on the contract together, co-wholesaling, same $10,000 assignment contract to the back end buyer, $10,000 a piece, and they're gonna decide by however they wanna break it up on the closing documents, how much goes to each one of them. Usually half goes to each one, it can be different. This is the more common way of doing this where you're not gonna run into legalities where I've talked to a lot of attorneys now remember, I'm not an attorney, but they say that this is 
uh, doable in most markets. I've, I have not had many of them push back. Now, this is the one that is happening a lot out there where there is a lot of question over and a lot of different individuals and a lot of different attorneys have given me different, different opinions on this. I've heard a lot of them say the double assignment is 100% illegal. Then I have some in my market doing this strategy where attorneys are saying, yes, it's legal. So guys, I don't know what the answer is on this. I'm just telling you what's going on. Personally for myself, I would avoid doing this bottom one. And if you are gonna work with another partner, do it like this and still always get legal representation to make sure that you're doing it correctly. <clears throat> So what a double assignment would be, would be you, the wholesaler, goes out there and gets the house under contract for 100 grand. You're going to plan to have a 10K spread, same house, same spread, the back and buyer's still only gonna pay 110. But let's say that you couldn't sell the property. You're marking the property for sale, you have a 14 day option, you've exhausted your resources, you have no more buyers that you can sell the property to. And instead of terminating the contract, you still have a window of time during the option period to sell it. You go find another wholesaler that you know has 50,000 people on their buyers list that can sell it. You reach out to them and say, can you sell this property? They say, sure, assign it to me and I'll mark it around town. So you're gonna have a purchase agreement between you and the seller and an assignment contract between you and the back end wholesaler, the second wholesaler, and then there's gonna be another contract to the back end buyer. This is a little bit complicated. I've actually heard of people doing triple and quadruple assignments so this is where it gets to become a gray area. Most of you guys are not near qualified as far as when it comes down to understanding the legalities of this to understand if you're doing it correctly or not, which is why I would avoid it. Every state could be different, but most places and most attorneys I've talked to say that you cannot do this. I would be very careful if you are doing this and if you have a title company or title attorney doing it, I would ask for their in-depth breakdown of why you're allowed to do this before you start doing this, guys. You don't wanna do something that gets you in trouble. Now, there'd be two different Wholesalers in the mix, two different assignments, 5K, 5K piece. So that's a long breakdown, but guys, this is kind of the situation what's going on. These are the different types of wholesaling. Now, you also have virtual wholesaling, wholesaling, prehab wholesaling. We're not gonna dig into these guys because this is all we really wanna go over here. Now, tomorrow, we're gonna talk about how families are getting hurt and why you're gonna potentially see a lot of these changes happening as well as because of you know NAR and different things like that why the data is not being captured in the marketplace and recorded, why homeowners are getting left hanging, going through foreclosure, losing all the equity, how certain houses they're getting hurt on. It's gonna be an interesting couple of videos, guys, so I hope you like this one. This is a, just kind of uh, a first framing video of what's going on with the different types of strategies. And we're gonna dig into why the problem is happening over the next ones. I will see you tomorrow. Subscribe to the channel, guys. Also, when you subscribe, hit that little bell that's gonna notify you when future videos comes up, come out so that you'll get them right away. But we'll go on to the next video, and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day.